with the word of God tonight. God is glasses. That means it's serious. It's serious. It's serious. And forgive me because I, I can't walk with these. I don't know. I'm a little, I can't I get a little dizzy. I get headaches. I'm trying to fit them in. So, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Oh my God. I'm already started. <laughs> Praise be to God. Listen, just like uh, Pastor David said, and I believe that we're here, we have a new society because of you. And every Friday you show up. Amen. That means a lot. You could be doing so many things, but you're here. That, that says a lot. And this is why we're here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> the topic, the message of tonight is chosen. Chosen you. Chosen. Mm -hmm. I wanted to put me. Mm -hmm. Question mark. Yes, mm -hmm. you. And then I, you know, I texted Dave and I said chosen. And then when I told Raymond, Raymond said, no, you should have went with me. Yes, you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I didn't want to text David back. But it's because we are chosen, all right? And I am grateful for God bringing David to this church because he came with that mission. I don't know what God told him, but he knew right from the gate, it's going to be three, it's three years. Yeah. Right from the beginning, he had the name and everything. There's no coincidence with God. And he believed, he still believed that there's going to be great things happening. That all of you are chosen for a reason. Amen. 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 That's one of the reasons I picked this uh, title. Chosen. I want you to go to the book of Judges. Chapter 6. And I want to talk about a story about a character on which he is mentioned in the what we call the Hall of Faith. Last time I spoke to you guys upstairs, I talked about Jacob. He's also in the Hall of Fame. Tonight I want to talk about Gideon. The first week of the year, they would preach. Somebody tell me what was it about. One of the main points, probably the biggest point of that preaching, the first Friday. Hold on. No excuses, right? And I was already starting to work on minds. I already know that it was going to kind of, but me and David, most of the time, we're in the same spirit. Praise God. And I asked him that Friday, when is my day? said, next week. I'm like, okay. So I got I to gotta get it ready. And unfortunately, you know, our family went through what it, what it went through. And it got pushed. But there's no coincidence with God. God knew that this is the day, right? You know me. So give me. <laughs> Praise be to God and worship the Lord, Father. Thank you, Lord. So, the judges, I just want to give you a quick thing. Judges were individuals that God chose in this period after Joshua for a specific reason. Right? So they were chosen. There's many judges. But I want to talk about Gideon today. There, was not, there, wasn't, there wasn't a judge like we see in court today. Um, it was a leader that God raised in those times. Right. So Judges 6, in the story of Gideon, there's three chapters. I encourage you, when you have time, to read these three chapters. I was finishing this message today at work, and as, as I'm reading, and I'm, I'm like, man, this is a mess. And I'm going to be honest with you, I gave up on the book of Judges a while back. Because <laughs> after reading Joshua, and all the victories, and all the fights, and then we get to Judges, and it's... The same thing is God helps them and they go back and rebel and God chooses somebody else, raises somebody up and they go back again and again. And it's just, I got, I just got fed up. I was like, man, oh, but I can't get away from the Old Testament. And Samson is my favorite uh, character in the Bible. Since little, I always wanted to be a strong man. And you read the story, like, I don't, I don't want to associate too much with Samson. <laughs> So let me give you the story of Gideon real quick for those that don't know. Gideon was cho uh, chosen by God for this period of time where Israel was having problems with the Midianites. 
hope I'm saying that right. The Midianites were just tearing them up. Anytime that they grew something or had uh, cattle, whatever they had, the Midianites would come and just take it over. Because Israel fell into idolatry. So God just let it happen. But Israel pleaded with God and asked for help. And here comes Gideon. And Gideon, you know, assembles an army and fights the Midianites. And I'm giving you a quick story. And God gives them the victory. And they end up you know, beating up their enemies. So that's basically in a nutshell what Gideon's story is. But it's so deep. And it's three chapters long. I encourage you to read it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I just want to talk. I want to, I'm going to be mostly on the six. And I'll jump. But that's just in a nutshell so you can understand what's happening. So let's go to Judges 6. Before I start, let me pray real quick. Father God, I thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, Lord, as I am honored with Jesus. The Spirit of God, help me to deliver this message. Open the hearts and minds of our youth. And let your words not just be simply words, but words that we can put into play, Father God. That's the more important thing. I thank you once again, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Judges 6, verses, verse 11 and 12. <clears throat> Shout a big amen when you have it. Amen. amen. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belonged to Joash, the Abyssalite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Stop right there. Mm. Hmm. I just want to give you a little disclaimer. Uh, yeah, that's like I'm about to say some things. I don't want you to get offended. But I'm just trying to bring a point. So I might use you, I might just use your name, but I'm just trying to make a point. I'm not directing anything towards you. God, the Lord says, mighty warrior. And we just read. He was threshing wheat. So he was trying to separate the wheat from the seed. But he is hiding. Now what mighty warrior hides? He's hiding. Because the Midianites, if they see him, they're going to take his wheat. But the Lord just called him a mighty warrior. And again I ask. He's hiding. He's scared. What type of mighty warrior is that? A mighty warrior is down for whatever. <laughs> if I walk around like a mighty warrior, I think that I'm a mighty warrior, they'll come and get it then. We'll fight for it. Understand? But he was hiding. But the Lord called them, and I say it again, mighty warrior. I don't see no mighty warriors in this room. If God calls upon you, Is he going to call you a mighty warrior? And just listen to me, because I'm just trying to get to something. I don't see a mighty warrior here. I see a quiet young man. I don't see a mighty warrior. Only he's about 100 pounds. What? What? <laughs> I, got, I got about 200 on. A mighty warrior? Get out of here. I don't see a mighty warrior. I live with this young lady. She doesn't even speak. Mm -hmm. See a mighty warrior. A mighty warrior is loud. My wife ready to fight. I don't see a mighty warrior. Danny? Danny just plays the drums. He's terrible at Fortnite. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 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 I don't see a mighty warrior. I see a great baker though. Amen. Yeah. Her cupcakes changed my life. <laughs> the best carrot cake, yeah. carrot, uh, cupcakes I ever had. They changed my life. I don't see a mighty warrior. I don't see a mighty warrior. That's because I'm human. <laughs> see, people cannot see what God sees. Amen. 
That's right. Amen. Come on. I don't see it. Come on, yeah. And I'm just using it as an example. And this that's an old example. Mm -hmm. but there is mighty warriors here. There's more than mighty warriors here. <clears throat> but see, people will see the outside, the exterior. And I'm here to tell you, the mighty God that I serve, he's not looking for appearances. Come on, yes, hallelujah. He didn't call Gideon and said, listen, scary cat. He said, no, the mighty warrior, because God knows all things. And God knows that deep down, Gideon was a warrior. Even though at the moment he was acting like he wasn't acting. But see, I can get it confused. I might say she's not a mighty warrior, but God knows what she really is. And you understand what I'm trying to say? So we're going to do anything I said. The outward appearance means nothing to God. Nothing. It is inside. It is the heart. Go to 1 Samuel. Write it down. 16, 7. Appearance is the way that someone or something looks. That means nothing to God. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. My Lord. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. See, I can get it wrong. I can say Emily's not a warrior. Emily's got a good voice, but she's shy. But Emily's got a great call. True worship. Amazing voice. And I think she can be probably the best translator we have. <laughs> Because <laughs> the other day she was just helping me completely out. I'm like, she, you, you should be the one here. Right. God is not worried about the appearances. And it's what's inside it. He knows that because he is God. He is the creator. He knows all things. Praise be to God. Amen? Yes, he does. We're here, right? If we go to, back to Judges 6, and let's jump to verse 15. And I want you to get that point very clear. It is what's in your heart, and God knows what you're made of. And God knows what you can produce. You might not see it that way, but God knows. Because I can understand when he called Gideon a mighty warrior, my man is over there, what? Excuse me? And I know I'm leaving a lot out of the story, that's why I say read it. Because right when God tells him that he needs him to fight the... Uh, Midianites. He says, God, hold up, if this is really you, let me go get a sacrifice. Because he wanted a sign. I'm leaving all these things out there. This is not part of what I was going really to talk about. But read the story. So in verse 15, pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. I am the least in my family. This is where it kind of connects with what David was talking about the first Friday, because here's Gideon with an excuse. How can I save Israel? Mm -hmm. My clan is the weakest. You see how we are? Just giving excuses. Same thing. I, listen, I believe that excuses started right at the fall of men and the God of yes. That immediately this is it, not me. It was the woman you gave me. Excuse. You didn't own it. Oh, yeah. It started right from the beginning. Moses. Me? What about they don't believe me? I can't, I don't even I don't know how to speak properly. Send somebody else. Give me the same thing. Prophet Jeremiah said, I, I don't know how to talk, I'm only 17. Excuses. Uh -huh. But like David said, and I took that to heart, this is the year of no excuses. Many yes. felt it that Friday. Many know that we've got to make changes. We have to stop giving up excuses. We're too 
how they say it, too washy-washy. That means we flip-floppers. Mm -hmm. That's an old school word. <laughs> Listen, I have a lot of excuses. My biggest excuse, and you know I'm an open book with you guys, but my biggest excuse was then, it's still time. I always said it was from the 80s, I've been hearing, yeah, Jesus is coming. God is coming soon. I'm like, boy, these people, bro. I was part of those people. They love the church. But I always thought, man, there is time. I can have to go and have fun. I want to experience, you know, what those guys are doing. Oh, I want to do that. I, now I got time. God works. No, 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 I got this. There is time. I'm telling you today, we have to stop the excuses. Look, what, look at the news that we just received. You guys saw the, uh, you know, the, the video of the dude that jumped the turnstile and killed himself? Anybody saw that? What was he, 22? 26, 27? 26, he jumped the turnstile and killed himself? But that was my biggest excuse. There is time. It's still time. I have to, I have to commit right now. God loves me. I can still do what I want to do. And then I'll commit. Because there's still time. Well, I thank God for his mercy and his, and his grace. That he made me. Yeah. But he should have come. Father, I think I see this today. Because that was my excuse. My, one of my biggest is I have many. Oh, the church is too boring. Oh, the church is oh, yeah, These people are hypocrites. The church is full of everything. No more excuses. Praise God, that's right. God has heard it all. You know what? Be straight up. Be straight up with God. Don't be a double minded person. You know, the Bible says in Matthew, Matthew 5, 37, let your yes be yes and your no's no. And I was talking about taking a no. Right? You don't have to swear to God. No, you are straight up as a Christian. You say yes. And you stand by your yes or say no. Just be straight up. Don't be double-minded. Don't be thinking about it. Don't have an excuse. Oh, no, no, no. no, no. Just straight up. There's no more excuses. And, 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 and to be honest, you know, the excuses are going to keep lying, but take this serious. Because it's a matter of life and death. This young officer lost his life. Who knows what his spiritual life was? What was his connection with God? And he just lost it. This dude wants to beat a fair of 275. I think it's 275, right? Yeah. And he lost his life. And I work for the NTA, so I don't think. I got the free swipe. <laughs> so I'm not jumping off this house. <coughs> it is serious. Let's stop with the excuses. James 1, 6 and 8 says, But let him ask in faith without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. When you're a double-minded person, that's what it says in verse 8. Mm -hmm. Any little wind can sh shift your thoughts. Yes. That's so why we have to get ready on the word of God. So when we hear some different things, it doesn't shift our focus. And I always, and I will never stop telling you this is the most important thing. It's the word of God. Right? I don't want to beat into it, but David gave us <laughs> no excuses. I pray. This whole week that this still <laughs> that this would not get erased. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As I told David last Friday, David, I, I wanted to jump out the seat and say something. And David, David, we let you know that you could do that. I said, mm -hmm. but with everything that was going on, oh, I was like, you know. But David says something that caught my attention last week, and it said that many of us, and I'm just going to include myself, are at the borderline of being a counterfeit, a fake Christian. Mm -hmm. And it hit me while I was sitting back there. See, counterfeit is easier. Mm. Because it's cheap. Mm. Counterfeit is way cheaper than the real deal. 
-hmm. You know why it's hard to rock the real deal? Because it costs more. Yes. So the price is more. Yes. There's more to be asked of you. Come on, Nelson. Yes. If you have to go the cheap route, Come on. I'm not talking about material things. Understand what I'm trying to say. You'd rather rock the Gucci belt, the fake Gucci belt, because it's cheap. But if you put it and you test it, it's not going to pass. The real belt costs more. I'm not talking about a belt. Can you understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Look, I got caught once in the street. They sold me a gold chain. <laughs> I, I thought about it twice. I said, I don't think I can say this story. I had, I, I, I like jewelry. God, God has saved me from you know, from all these things. But I had a big chain, and I'm walking down. I think was two, one, two years old. I'm walking with my big chain, a big thirteen. And this guy's like, Poppy, Poppy, look, look what I got. A nice chain with a Jesus piece. So called Jesus piece, that's one. That's not Jesus. That's the one. And, he's, and I'm like, whoa, my eyes lit up. How much you want for it? So let me get like 120. This is 2003, 2004. Gold wasn't expensive, that expensive. I didn't know nothing about gold. I did buy, I did have a chain, but. So I'm like, yo, let's go to the ATM. That dude would have cleaned me out. Because I didn't know no better. Because I, I couldn't know what's the real from the, the fake. And he said, don't give me whatever you have. And I had $60, I think, in my pocket. <laughs> that should have been all the red flags. This guy's rushing. And I was so tired when I found out I was fake. Now I'm going to rock it for a few weeks. <laughs> and then I sold it. And then he found out that it was fake, and I had to give the money back. I didn't know it was fake. So I got caught. But you know what that made me do? That made me educate myself in gold. Hey. Yeah, hold on. Wow. Wow. Praise God. That made me educate myself. And, and, and don't get me wrong. This was on 76th Street at Roosevelt. There was a McDonald's there. And I went a few times over there to find this dude. <laughs> But you know what? I said, you know what? That's my fault. And I will never get caught again. Now I'm going to educate myself. I want to know everything that is about the, that you have to know about gold. Because he burned it. He put the light on it. Who's there with him? He put the light on it. He scratched it on the ground. I said, I, I, I hit it. <laughs> but you know the saying, right? If it's too good to be true. I got caught. But then I educated myself that gold, man, you got to put a lot of heat on it to melt. A lot. Mm -hmm. That little lighter was nothing. You know what I mean? Gold, you have to, 24 karat gold is pure gold. Nothing else on it. I educated myself on diamonds. Now, now I want to become a jeweler after that. <laughs> That's how crazy it was. But like I said, I had a problem with, you know, with the lifestyle of rocking chains and all that stuff, you know what I mean? But I learned a big lesson. And I, <laughs> I got some other stories. I don't want to you know, make it about me. This is not about me. But what I'm trying to say is that I have to learn. Because I got sold the faith. And the same way David said that we are the borderline, and I include myself, I want to learn everything to get away from that border. I don't want to be not even close to being a fake Christian. I want to be the real deal. I want to pay the price to be a real Christian. I don't know if you're down to pay the real price. Maybe, you, uh, maybe you, you're okay with riding on that border. That's between you and God. Um, I might be speaking to people that are going to see this later on. That's what I wanted to add last week too. Please God. The authentic, the real, it's going to cost me. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go to Judges 6. Let's jump to verse 25. Now after God, after Gideon does his thing and tells God he needs a sign, God gives him the sign. God tells him something to do. 
that's 20, uh, uh, verse 25 to 27, I'll read that same night, the Lord said to him, I'm sorry, sorry. Take the second bull from your father's herd, the one seven years old. Tear down your father's altar to bow and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on top of, his, of this height. Using the wood of Asherah pole that you cut down, offer the second bull as a burnt offering. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family and the townspeople, he did it at night rather than in the daytime. <laughs> I want you to pick up your axe tonight. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. I like what a man did when we didn't got the fist up. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. I want you to pick up your axe. Because there's going to be some things you're going to have to tear down. These people work in idolatry. And he goes, tell us, go to tear those altars up. But he was afraid. There are things that we must tear down and surrender to God in our lives. <laughs> no matter the consequences. You know why he did it that night? Because he was afraid of the consequences. Because if you read down, and I said, that's why I said read the story further down, it says that the townspeople wanted his head for that. That's why he did it at night. He was afraid. Gideon could have lost his family, but that, not, but that did not seem to face him. But he was still afraid, and he did it discreetly. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of losing your friends? And your family? Or your family? Or maybe you know deep down in your heart that that relationship that you're in it is not the correct one. It's not the right one. And you're just using an excuse to justify what you do. Mm. Did you get that? What are you afraid of? Why are you not letting go of the things that we've been talking for years here now to let go? Why are you giving God crumbs hey. when it comes to the time? Mm. I don't understand. But it's true, we have time for everything. But to read our word, to take time to, to talk to God, the very minimum. What are you afraid that you're going to lose friends? Are you an undercover uh, Christian here? A double agent? Here? You might seem like we're all Christians here, but out there, are you a Christian? Do the people know your faith? Are you afraid of your family? And I get it. Your family's the first one that turns on you. I get that. <laughs> I'll tell you a quick story. I think I said it before. When I reconciled in 2008, I was in Times Square Church, and I go home all happy. I had told you the story many times. And as soon as I got to the house, Yogi is just going off. <laughs> it was a nice hallway. I'm like, Father God. <laughs> Señor, de prende el demonio, Padre. <laughs> because she didn't believe that I was in church. You know what I mean? But I'm so happy. And I'm like, you know, I just, I just reconciled with God. And, God is gonna, and over there, as soon as I put that key, I hear, oh, I'm like, oh, Father. <laughs> and at those times, it was hard times. Because I was waiting I was waiting for my clothes. Any time that I came from work, I knew Father. And one day, my suitcase was going to be outside. Where I Sure. And I said it many times, I don't want to. But it was serious in my relationship. Because I thought, hold on. But sometimes those closest to you is going to turn. Not sometimes. I mean, you know, something. Same thing when I came here to this church. I spoke to Pastor Ozzy, and I wish he was here because I am grateful that I met that man about 20 years ago. 19, 19 years, 19, 20 years ago. And like I said, and I say it again, and I told David plenty of times, I'm glad that God put me next to this man. I'm glad. <laughs> My pleasure. My pleasure. 
this guy. I don't want to write. But this is what, you know, and I say that because this is what we're trying to do with you. See, I brought into the, the whole thing. I'm all in with you. I believe what David uh, believes. I believe that we can make huh, beautiful things down here. That we can be the ones that start the fire. Oh, yes. Yes. I believe that. At first, I'll be honest. I was just riding the wave. Because I didn't know no better. But as, as soon as the more I get closer to God, the more I read the scripture, the more yes. I pray, the more I, you know, the more I don't want to fail God. It's the more that I get closer and the more my eyes get clearer. The glasses are about great. I can see so clear. Praise be to God. He wipes, he takes, he tears down those things that cover me. Now, and I can see it. And I, and I say it. I always, to me, it's amazing. His story, when he told me that, he, he rejected the, the decision. And then he had to, you know, go back with no pastor. You know what I mean? And, and he had that fight. But he came with a mission. And I'm glad that I'm part of that. Mm. And I'm glad that I was the teacher on Sunday and I was still a little new in the mix. And, you know, and, and I'm glad that he didn't say, I don't need nobody next to me. Because David is, a, David is a seasoned man. And I'm glad he didn't push me to the side. And I'm glad that I didn't even, and I, you know what? I thank God that I was just starting. I'm going to tell you what, i got to be honest. Because if I, if I was a seasoned vet here in church, and then they come, a, a new dude comes and takes my position, that would have been a problem, a little problem. Because that's how we are. I just gotta be honest with you. you, you you're a worshiper and all of you, Jonathan, no, where's Jonathan, where's Jonathan going? And Jonathan just showed up and all of a sudden he's there. You see, but that's how we think. Mm -hmm. But that's not how I thought. Because I just want to, Pastor helped me in the beginning and I was just trying to get all the info. And I wasn't worried about a position. I never wanted a position. Listen, in the beginning, I wanted to ride that chair too. Mm -hmm. Dad, I gotta think. Your mom. Bro, that's, this is this is when compassion and love comes, man. But I, I'm gonna get it. Praise be to God. We worship you, Lord. I came to let those doors broken. In pieces. I just had reconciled two weeks before. I was at the bottom, at the lowest. I came through those doors. I came straight down to this room. And then the adults had a uh, Bible, uh, Bible study. I didn't know nobody. I sat down. And I listened to the Bible study. Then I went upstairs and I met your mom. The first lady that sees me. And she, she welcomed me with this love. Praise God. Praise God. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> that made me feel that I was home. But this is my family. I'm comfortable. And I mean, nobody gave me the, the crazy eye. Maybe they did. I didn't see it. But to, to find that right off the gate, as soon as you walk in with that love, I said, man, I'm home. Because I've been through other churches. I've been to Times Square Church. That's a big church. But guess what? Times Square Church, you go in, and you can go out, and you don't know nobody. Just a number. Nobody. You have to really get the... You know, get into the, their system to be able to fellowship and do this. They have a whole school, but you know, it's not like here. It's our culture, our, our culture too. I mean, we're more. I mean, but that was so special. That's why, yo, leave your problems aside. When you come to those, Lord, come to worship God. Come to give it all to God. Yes, Bring a smile. God. I know it's tough. Yes, my God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Because you come with your little frown, and you don't know who's walking up through those doors. Mm -hmm. That's very important, man. It's not even here. It's Praise God. Oh, Father God, I thank you. We thank what you are you afraid of? To commit, to fully commit, what are you afraid of? Stop. That relationship that you're in, like I said, I'm not. This, I, I send this to my family. This is not, you know. What are you afraid? Of? Maybe you know that relationship that you're in. It's no good, brother. Be or whatever. And you know it. Now let's talk about relationship real quick. I got a story. The best thing is to ask God. I thank God that I, I met Kimmy. Kimmy's the one that made the move. 
<laughs> but as soon as I, I, I grew up in a church, I grew up in church as a, as a kid. You know the story. I really didn't know Kimmy's story. And I think I was 19. I was 19, Kimmy was 17. Huh? 18, 16. Oh. Whoa. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is that when I came and I was ready to marry her because I got her pregnant, and my mom, my mom said, you have to get married because you're living in sin, right? Because I thought I could live with her for the rest of my life, and I didn't have to get married. Because the day that things get sour, I was sweet. But my mom said, no, nah, you're living in sin. Man, well, push so I got to get married. So I was 22, and guess what? The pastor's the one that went to City Hall with me. It's not here. <laughs> But anyway, what I'm trying to say is that I didn't know her background, and I just thank God. I think that God knows everything. And as soon as her mom started the fire in her family, mm -hmm. she met Pastor Ozzy, and she's the one that got the whole world in her family. When we went to church, I reconciled that 22, and she also started looking for God. Now, I wouldn't know her background if she did it before or not. So I would say I got lucky. Right? And even so, when we were separate, when we were not following God, oh my God, it's hard. So maybe that relationship that you're in is not the one. You should ask God. Or if you want to get into a religion, I know you guys are young. So you are a little older, you got coming. I know of a couple, I won't say no names, just, just listen. My personal opinion when I saw them, and I was, you know, I said, well, something's over. But that's just me. I'm a friend. You know, what do I do? But as I got to know the dude, he tells me that he's going through problems with the relationship, young couple. And he's like, yo, uh, we're going to put it in God's hands. We're going to take and separate you and, and ask God if this is the right move. God would let me know if she's the one, and God will let her know if I'm the one. And God told both of them. They're not. See, they put their trust on God. But sometimes we like to justify and you think you can change people and you don't want to put God in the mix. Yes, yes, yes. You, you, want, you want to skip all that. No, that's the one. I like her. That she works at a strip club. No, no, I can change her. I can change her. That she works in a bar. No, I can change it. I can change anybody. Yes, amen, you can. But understand what I'm trying to say. The Bible says do not get joined with an uncle joke. Yeah, you're right, you're right. This is going to be hard. Right? If you're trying to follow God, they're not. Listen, I, I, I lifted with Kimmy. Kimmy, Kimmy loves God. Yeah, listen. God, I love you. <laughs> oh my God, I like, bye, bye. Let's see what's coming. Let's see what's coming after this. <laughs> I want to apologize publicly to <sighs> what she went through right now. So tough for them, for this family. I couldn't, under I can't understand because I think I have a close relationship with the man. But these people were broken, and I was a little like, you know, and I said some things, and Isaac got mad at me. But it's because I'm seeing it from a different perspective, and I hold the word of God true that this man is. He already went to heaven. He finished his race, right? Talking about God. our grandfather. And I'm seeing her, but I'm being like, no, come on. Like, seriously? You know what I mean? So I apologize if I said anything that hurt you. But what I want to say is that she had an excuse not to be here, mm -hmm. right? She could have used all that to have, to have an excuse not to be here. And I asked her the other day because they put everything on her. Everything, all the decision making, all these running around, they put it on her. She has to mourn her grandfather <laughs> and, and make decisions. Mm -hmm. Who does that? And the strongest person in their family that I thought will be the strongest person that's going to take, you know, the lead on this, her mom that's been, you know, and I'm not saying it to, to disrespect, who was the weakest person? That's our father. And it's understandable. Mm -hmm. 
But she had an excuse. But she didn't use that as a crutch. Because we like to use excuses. Yes. Yes. There's no excuse. I'm not talking to none of you here. You know why? Because you're here. Amen. You want to be. Amen. And if you're not, just stand in the room. I won't be the only one that I say, you know, I'm, not just, I'm just here so I won't get fired. You know what I mean? But you're here, you're paying attention. This is what we want to do. Build leaders. Pastor Ozzy is a great leader because he wants to build leaders. David is a great leader. He wants to build leaders. He doesn't want this for himself. I just, you know, I just want this. And I mean, nah, he wants to build great leaders. It's not use excuses. I don't know. I went. Come on, no, no, yes, but it's not. <laughs> Listen, surrender full control to God, to the Spirit of God. Let Him dictate your path. Jesus. Surrender control to God through the Holy Spirit. You saw He took and broke down the altar, the pole. It was a wooden pole. God said, build an altar from that. Can you take all of that and break it down and bring it up to God? Bring it to your altar that's in your heart. All of that that is holding you back. All of that that is idolatry in your life, believe it or not. Because you have given it first and second place. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Yes, my God. Thank and you, God is at the bottom of your list. Thank you, Jesus. If God was in a phone book on your life, is he the first number? And I'm not talking about alphabetical order. I'm just saying you have a list. Who to call first? Are you calling God first? Or God is at the bottom of the list? Or is it a double list that when everything is going good, God is at the bottom. But when everything is going bad, oh no, he's the first one to call. It's two lists. Because many people call upon God when there's an issue. But when there is no issues, it's at the bottom of the list. It's the last one I call. He's good. Oh man, I don't know what's coming down. Praise be to God. Oh, yeah. I glorify the name. Surrender. Give it to God. Whatever's holding you back. It is not easy. I tell you, my first year was the toughest year. Because I'm battling with my own problems. I'm battling at home with my wife. She's not serving God. And I'm, I'm here on a Friday, and she's in the club on a Friday. And then I got to go home and deal with that. And it was always a painful fight. And then I just said, God, here it is. You know why? Because I learned that it's your problem now. God, my problem, I give it to you. Because I'm getting angry. I'm getting mad. And that's just getting me away from you. I, I said it. I even said it. And be careful what you say sometimes. Because I said, it. Well, you know what? I'm not even going to do this anymore. That's just the enemy working. Because that's what he wants. He wants to change my course. But my course was said when God gave me the opportunity to raise up from a bed again. Come on. Come on. Glory be to God. We worship you, my Lord. And I know you know the story. I got really sick and I, I, it was over for me. And I told God, listen, don't make promises to God. I told you that last time. Because we, we, we just, we were bad at keeping them. But I told him this. I told him this. I'm being dead serious. Because I promised God that I was going to start coming on Wednesdays. Have you seen me here on Wednesdays? Right? And I, I wanted to play the video this Wednesday. Then I changed my mind because I didn't want to get too deep. But there's no excuses. <coughs> Ten minutes into the worship, it was just the worship team and Karen. That was it. And while it was recorded, it was Brother Max in the back. You know, probably no watches. It was empty. That hurt me. I just came back from work. And I, I watched this and I was like, I already called David, but it was 9 o'clock. I'm like, I don't want to bother him. And I'm like, I was ready. I mean, because I, I took a God, I'm, I'm going to start doing it on Wednesdays. But don't promise nothing to God. Seriously. Seriously. But when God picked me up from the bottom, I told him, listen, I'm going to fail you. But this is it. <laughs> but I'm going to fail you. I was honest. But this is it. I'm done. I had 20 years, I had a good run. If you want to call it a good run. I had 20 years of jumping around, up and down in the world, I'm done. 
I'm done. This, 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 also, this cost me my family, my life. I didn't want to leave that legacy to my kids. Because I sat in my bed and I said, this is what's going to be written in my tombstone? Nothing. Because I didn't do nothing. I took my kids younger to church, but then I, I, I got off the, the, you know, I went back again to my, my, my simple uh, living. So I did nothing. I said, God, I failed you first. And then I failed him. So I didn't promise him. But I knew that I was going to fall a few times. And it was going to take a while to get, you know, get right. Because that's how it is. You go through this walk and you get a little bumpy. Because you're fighting something in you. But I told him I'm done. I'm done with running back to over there. There's nothing over there. Over there's going to be one way to take it out. Straight up. But, uh, I'm over here. I hope that I can go, you know, give it to God. Whatever it is. Put it in God's hands. Whatever you're struggling with. Yes. Whatever it is. I don't want to put you on glass, but you know. Because you make a commitment, you come up here, you hear the message, and you feel good, but you go up there and you do the same thing. That makes no sense. The phone is more important. The game is more important. You didn't even read the Bible the whole week, but yet, last Friday you got up, or the Friday before you got up, and you said, yeah, I'm down with it. It's not a, uh, you know, it's, it's reality. Until when? Oh my God. We worship your name. I don't want to sound like a broken record. I, Lord, God, I don't want to sound like a broken record. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. We have, I think that on time because I, I know, we have what's called, what I call, I just, you know, as I was writing this, Lot's Wife Syndrome. I'm, I'm going to get off the topic because I know you got it. But you know Lot's wife, what happened to her? Anybody? Lot's wife, Lot's wife. She became a soul. The two angels came to Lot and told him, get out of that city. All you have to do is run, don't look back. And they ran, and his wife turned back and looked back, and she turned into a pillar of salt. <laughs> Jesus. You know why? Because we're attached so much to the world. She couldn't give up the world. She ran as she's running. Listen, they're running for their life, and she still looked back. The only thing they told her not to do, she looked back and she turned to a pillar of salt. If it wasn't for God's mercy, if it wasn't for God's grace, it would have been a long time that me and you would have been salt on somebody's stick. And I'm not talking about him laying salt. Mm -hmm. pillar of salt a long time ago. I would have been that Puerto Rican soul. Goya. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, let's, let's stop. Let's stop being a double agent. Let's get real. If you need to reconcile with God, if you really want to commit, today's the day. Just as it was last week and then the week before, and it's going to be the next week. Because I'm in a mission to make sure that we push leaders out of here. And this is not going to change. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm sorry if I'm coming a little harsh, but this is the me broke me first. I want to give you the best. I thank God. We must put to death those desires. Desires. Stop being a friend of the world. You know, if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy to God. You know that already. A yoke. Detach uh, yourself. See, we like to connect ourselves with the world. Like David was saying, you and the world walking together. You have to break off of that. Jesus says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, what we're, and in this, I don't want to take this out of context. Understand that what he's saying is that all the law and all of this, is, it's a burden on people. And he said, Jesus says, yo, my, my yoke is light. But when he says my yoke is light, to me is that I can walk with him. It's going to be light. Because it's light work to walk with Jesus. You know what's hard? It stops sin. It's the sin. Because mm -hmm. the walk with God is easy. But it's your battle with sin. 
Your battle with the things that you used to feed yourself with, that's the battle. And I said, yo, come grab, grab on to me. Yes, Why praise God. Why are you Put it in God's hands. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Now, unfortunately, we live in a world that is all fucked out right now, and, and good they call it bad, and bad they call it good, and it's just, it's not going to get no good. It's, it's going to get worse before it gets better. How about that? All right? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Judges 8. Let's jump. And I'm so sorry that I beat on to that. I want to get you a time. I know we want to we think I want to be respectful with time. But give it to God, please. Please. If not, next time I come, we'll go right back and get at it again. It's all right. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I ask God sometimes, hey, just give me a goody goody message. I want to, I want to, you know, that's, that's faith. I'm not going to be a you can do this or you can do that. And it is God that can do this. It is God. It is Jesus. It is through Him. This man was hiding. But God called him a warrior and lifted him up and he moved with 20,000. And I, I, it's not here, but I want to real quick. If you read the story, he started with 20,000 soldiers, and it dropped down to 300. You know why? Because God is not going to give the glory to nobody. Because if he would have done it with 20,000, they would have said, oh, we have the strength. We have the power. But it's not us. It is him. Father God, I thank you. God will give you the victory. Judges 8, 28. Thus, thus Median was subdued before the children of Israel so that they lifted their heads no more. And the country was quiet for 40 years in the days of Gideon. So Gideon won the war. He battled who he had to battle. And for 40 years it was quiet. Israel was at peace. So God will give you the victory. God said it. God raised him. God chose him. God has chosen you for this time, for this moment. And, I, and I'll take it right to the beginning. Because sometimes, person told me that a person spoke to their life that uh, of things that you know that he is capable of in God and that became a problem to him. You know why? Because now he sees that he cannot live to that expectation of what that person said to him. You understand? So sometimes you just gotta pump it up a little. Pump, put in the brakes and start start slow. Start slow. Everything will fall into place. Like I said, I wasn't looking for this. I was I, I was going right in the chair, but the more I read, the more I got in with God, the more I said no. Nah. And when they asked me, "Can you do this?" Absolutely, I'm grateful for God did in my life. If I have to sweep, I sweep, and it's not a problem. If I have to wash the doors and usher, I will do it. It's not an issue. I am grateful for what God did. And maybe that's the problem. Maybe you don't know because you haven't been through something. Maybe you don't have you haven't paid the price. Maybe you haven't shed the tears. And I say you're in a better position than I was. Because that is the, the true testimony that you stay away from that. I said it when Pastor Ozzy said it, I always told Ozzy, that is the testimony that, that I really like. So, because God can change anybody. He has changed murderers, rapists, whatever. Yes, yes. But to be in church from the, from the beginning to, to now and still be, oh, that is, that is the truth. Don't think that there's something better out there. And listen, I struggle. Sometimes you get a whip or something, and you're like, wow, I remember. Mm -hmm. Me and, and Kelman driving back here, um, you know how the rule of the train is there? And I told him about a story. Me and my man, he was drunk, and he almost swiped all those cars there. You see where my mind went? Yeah. Right to those days when I used to party and stuff. And all of a sudden, my mouth is moving. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, hey, whoa. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Let's cut it right there. Yeah. See? It's going to be a fight. Put it, put it up the front. Throw some punches. It's gonna be there. I'm telling you, don't look for nothing out there. You make it worse. Every time that I stepped away from God, I made, I made it worse for myself. I never was in the club. I never smoked weed. Eh? I left God. I started smoking weed. I left God. I started doing this. I'm not bringing that up right now. We'll talk later if you want. <laughs> but it's true. Every time I left God, it was worse for me. The Bible says that when the house is empty, it's nice and clean. That spirit that used to be there now comes with seven. Seven. Seven come now. Now they're rolling deep. And things change. I got worse on my sins and worse. That's why I said don't look for nothing out there. I'm going to finish up. Oh, man, I'm so sorry, David. 
That will give you the biggest stuff. If you read the story, I'm going to quit. Because I know you got you got what you need again. If you read the story after the victory, Gideon goes and built this road. He, he gave him this gold and he, <laughs> he built this thing and the, and the people went back to worshiping and idol. So all the effort, all the, all the work that he did meant nothing at the end because they went right back. He forgot what his family did and he was just, you know, and we're like, we walk a, a thin line and we might do a lot of good but sometimes we make that decision that changes everything. And it's got consequences. We want to build this golden robe or something like that. Why? But that's how we go. Sometimes we make that wrong decision and everything changes. Amen? Jesus. God is so good. Hallelujah. We must be careful because at times we walk that thin line and we make mistakes. We should learn from our past so we don't make the same mistakes. Like getting when he made the road and it's in Judges 8 27. Read the story, read three chapters. Jesus is the only warrior king who proves faithful to the end. See, we're going to fail. We're just like we all did him fail. Even though he accomplished what God wanted, <laughs> God's word would never come back for it. But then he made that mistake. Uh, chosen you. Yes, you. <laughs> God has chosen you. Are you willing to take the step of faith towards God today? Amen. Jesus. Martin Luther King Jr. said once, faith has taken mm -hmm. the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. Yes. Are you willing to take that step? Oh. Or is there anybody here like the prophet Isaiah? Here I am, send me. Isaiah 6, 8. God said, who should I send? Isaiah said, send me. Are you bold enough to say me? I want to do that. And it takes time. Get into your word. You'll learn. God will put those words for that family member. God will put those words for that friend. Keep fighting for yours. Very important. Don't give up on it. And be mindful sometimes. But there's some people that it's just not going to work. Just pray for them. You don't have to get into these, you know, these things. And you're going to lose some friends. I lost my best friend. I know. I pray that one day he'll walk through these doors. Yes, and listen listen to me. I've been time that I know that I'm going to preach and I want to invite him. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, at least we have an open communication. We have texted each other. But I lost the best friend. A friend that they call uncle. We don't talk. Because of this. And it's good. It's all right. Keep praying for him. And I know that he might walk through these doors one day. I have that faith. But understand this, that it is a choice. I'm sorry, baby. Don't, don't apologize, baby. Praise be to God. It takes one to start the fire, like I said. Yes. Is there anybody here that will say, like Isaiah, right? Or are you just going to be, look, I'm busy. My phone is more important. My game, my friend, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my whatever. That's <laughs> sometimes I like crazy stuff. I am not ready to put God first over everything. Which one are you today? The one that says, yo, send me or I'm oh, not right now. <laughs> God has chosen you for this moment, for this time. For those who, for new, that means to love and choose before him. He also predestined to be comfort, conform, sorry, to the image of his son. I'm going to leave that. And that's in Romans 8, 29. I just want to use that word, conform. That's to be, that, that means to be similar. And he wants you to be similar like Jesus. Let's be imitators of Jesus and at least, and at least at the very core, the very thing, let's try to just win as many souls as we can for the kingdom of heaven, starting with our own. Because it starts here first. Yes, it does. Yeah. It starts here first, and then we can go reach the souls. Amen? Yeah. I appreciate you. I love you. And I'll bless you all. <laughs>